when you are going to use some of these strategies for reuse and decontamination, all team members should be trained and comfortable with several aspects of the N95 reuse program before the participation begins. Some of these are going to be to understand how not to contaminate yourself during reuse and storage, how to label the storage bin or the bag after reuse and before, before you reuse it again, how to don and doff the mask safely, what PPE to use when doing so, and when to send for decontamination. Knowing when to discard, how to check for proper fit and function by performing a user seal check before each use. And we're going to talk about that on the next slide. So user seal check is what you should be doing each and every time you put on an N95, regardless of if you've sent it for decontamination or not. And this is when you put your N95 on. And a positive seal check is when you put the mask on and you kind of exhale sharply and you feel around the edges of the mask to make sure there's no air escaping from around the mask. If you do feel air escaping around the mask, that means you have an air leak. You don't want any air coming in or going out when you have an N95 mask on. So if you do feel that air leak, that means that your user seal check has failed and you should not use that mask or contact your supervisor to either get a new mask or to be fit tested again with a different mask. A negative seal check is exactly the opposite of that, where you inhale sharply, creating a slight collapse in the mask. The mask should not collapse completely. And again, if you see anything different than that, then that type of seal check will fail. Again, if either of these fail, then you should contact your supervisor and either get a new mask, or you should be fit tested for a different type of mask, or find an alternative, which we'll again talk about in a little bit. There have been several methods of decontamination that have been approved by the FDA, and one of those is vaporized hydrogen peroxide method. And this method inactivates the COVID-19 virus on all the mask types that have been tested. This is most likely going to be done in your sterile processing department. It has been well known for killing other types of organisms that we're more familiar with, and this has not been shown to compromise any type of the filter performance fit or the elastic band quality. So it's been very successful in the facilities that it has been used in and has been tested. You must return the mask to the original user and you must have trained personnel performing this type of decontamination. So you will start to see this being used more widely if it's not already being used in your facilities. There's also a steam sterilizer option that has been approved by the FDA that can hold um, up to 180 masks in the sterilizer that's also being widely utilized because of, of the amount of masks that can be used in each cycle. Another method that's being used pretty widely in our facilities is UV decontamination. And you can see a photo of what that might look like in your facility if you are using it. It works by damaging the genomic material in the virus itself. Um, with this method, you do have to make sure that the UV light is hitting all sides of the mask. So where you see it now, you can see the UV machine in, in the background there, and you do have to make sure you rotate where that light hits, so you hit both sides. Um, the UV disinfection method is widely used for other types of disinfection methods, like air, water, and surface decontamination. So this is something that we are really familiar with in other types of decontamination. So we know that it works, and we know that it works on a lot of other envelope viruses, so it is something that we know is safe and effective, and it has not been shown to affect that filter efficiency or the straps and, and the mask itself. So it is something that has been very successful as well in our healthcare facilities for extended use of N95 masks. This graphic from the CDC shows masks that are good to use and some that aren't as great to use. The mask on the right in the middle is one to point out due to the exhalation valve. This mask allows particles to escape when standing next to others. These graphics and others from the CDC website can be useful to you in your facility. The elastometric respirator is one to point out because it is not cleared by the FDA for fluid resistance, even though NIOSH rates it as equivalent protection to an N95 respirator. These masks require additional maintenance, including filter replacement, fit testing, cleaning, and disinfection of the mask. These should be evaluated carefully in your facility if you are assessing whether or not to use these masks. The PAPR devices 
are probably one that we're most familiar with as an alternative for N95 respirators. These are widely used for those who might fail fit testing or can't wear an N95 mask. The paper components must be cleaned and disinfected after each use by the steps that you can see in this slide. They must be disassembled, cleaned and disinfected, rinsed, dried, and then inspected. If any of the parts look to be damaged, broken, or anything that seems like it's not right for another use, then we must take them out of circulation so that they can be further inspected before additional use. The PAPRs also must be stored in a place where they won't be damaged, lost, or broken so that we can continue to use them safely. To note, we must make sure that the PAPR parts are never immersed in disinfection solution or any other kind of liquid and that that liquid never reaches the air inlets or outlets or the motor blower housing areas so that they continue working properly. An alternative to the PAPR is something newer called the CAPR. This is sometimes referred to as the no hose PAPR system. This is um, the components that you see here in the picture is really all that it is other than the battery pack. So it doesn't have the hose, which is sometimes the hardest part to clean effectively. Uh, you do still have to clean it, but it does have a disposable face shield and a forehead band on the inside, which we can just throw away after use, which makes cleaning a little bit easier. So this is kind of just a newer version of a PAPR system that does have to be wiped down after each use, but it has a little bit less components to wipe down. So it does make it a little bit easier. Mm-hmm.